children how are you so today our uh, the chapter that we are going to start is the necklace from class 10th uh, supplementary reader so this chapter is written by guy d maupassant that is the author of the chapter so as you know the name of the chapter is necklace so the story revolves around the necklace only so you can see the necklace first of all we'll talk about the background of the chapter so you must know uh, what is the time and place of the story what is the setup of, of the story and where and when it has been written so before we start we should know the background of the story the time and the place uh, that means the setting of the story as well then only you will be able to understand the chapter carefully so uh, if you read the chapter you will get to know that the uh, story is set up in paris france so to and the time of uh, when uh, this would have happened or uh, the author have thought about that is during the late 1800s so it is uh, the incident of around that period of time and what kind of Uh, society uh, was prevalent at that time how do the people uh, live uh, what were their styles and how did they uh, manage their lives so next we'll talk about the background of the story so in the late 80s uh, society in paris had a rigid class structure uh, like you know that uh, uh, in many society there is a rigid kind of structure so the society is divided into different classes or categories and here in paris also in france also there was a same kind of structure over there and what was that structure will get to know in further so aristocrats were at the top of the social ladder uh, the people those who had great wealth they have uh, large estates lands money so uh, and they had also had so many servants and those people were called aristocrat that was the different class or the higher class you can say that so then next come is the other class that is below the uh, aristocrats that is the middle class and they were mainly consisting of merchants clerks government workers and others so here in the story we will talk about the the family of a clerk and how uh, the family of a clerk manages their household how they earn their living and what kind of status they have in the society so we'll be talking about the clerk's family here in the chapter so uh, this class the middle class uh, were uh, having the merchant clerks government workers and others so they didn't have that much uh, wealth and estates like the aristocrats had so middle class families generally lived in the modest homes or apartment and could afford to hire a servant or two uh, they had that much money at least they had apartment and they had uh, modest kinds of home uh, maybe uh, two room set three room set and they could also afford to have uh, one or two servants in the home as well so this is the main thing that you must notice here so next comes they were not starving or poor uh, it it doesn't mean that they were uh, from the middle class and they were very poor and they were starving they didn't have anything to eat uh, they definitely earned uh, a good amount that was enough for them to just manage the household and their livelihood so uh, they did have a lot less money uh, and social stature as the aristocrats so definitely they were not enjoying the same status as the aristocrats but uh, they had that much amount that they could afford to have one or two servants in their home and um, live a moderate life i would say so then uh, the main point that you have to notice here is the middle class women did not work outside the home only men worked so main thing that you notice in the chapter that only the the men of the middle class go out and earn for the family but the women are not allowed to go outside to work and earn so that kind of structure was there at that period of time in late 1880s moving to the next uh, still we are talking about the background info 
so below the middle class there was a huge number of peasants and servants who worked for the rich of framed the land so we always know that in our society as well there was a structure earlier now it is getting abolished but uh, we know that there was a, a different class of people so in that case also there were peasants kisan unke nokar jo ki unke liye kaam karte the aur unki jo land hai unki rakhwali karte the unko bhote the ya us pe kheti karte the unke liye so next people would try to own material good to take themselves look higher in society than they were so what generally the people do the middle class people uh, generally uh, wanted the materials or the goods that the aristocrats have the upper class people have and in that case they have to uh, just go for a loan or anything so they wanted themselves to show like they are very rich so wo apne aap ko batana chahte the ki hamare paas bhi ye sab cheeze hain hum bhi ye sari aisi life enjoy karte hain lavish life jaise ki aristocrats jo hain us time ke jo upper class ke log enjoy kiya karte the so people would try to own goods to make themselves look higher in society than they were to actually mein jo hote the wo usse zyada batane ki koshish karte the to us case mein definitely Uh, या तो आपको किसी से चीज़ बोरो करनी पड़ेगी या यू 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 फाइंड इफ समबडी कैन गिव यू द लोन एंड यू कैन जस्ट बाय दैट थिंग टू मेक यू लुक मोर रिच आई वुड से सो बोथ मैन एंड वीमेन इन द लोअस्ट क्लास वर्क हार्ड लेबर विद लॉन्ग गॉड्स फॉर द रिच सो इन कंपेरिजन टू द रिच पीपल दे वर्क वेरी हार्ड टू अर्न देयर लाइवलीहुड सो बोथ मैन एंड वीमेन वर्क Uh, although the men, women worked inside the house and the men worked out, out outside the house moving to the next we will uh, be connecting to the story so how will we connect to the story and the chapter necklace uh, there is a character of a woman who wants to own something uh, very costly which she is not able to buy from the money that they have they do not have that much finances that they can afford to get that costly thing so hamesha bola jata hai hamare paas jitna hai usi mein hame manage karna chahiye bola jata hai my language mein jitni chaddar hai utni hi pair pasaro theek hai agar aap usse bahar pair nikaloge to wo chaddar aapko choti pad jayegi so this is the same thing happening in the story so there is a women character in the story who wants to own so many things like the rich women have she wanted to have the classy life she wanted to have the life of the rich women so that she can have so many dresses so many jewelry and she can party all day around so uh, we just can think of uh, the things uh, why do a person wants expensive things in life uh, what is the actual reason that the so what are the reasons that the women so connecting to the story uh, we can just uh, say that there uh, is a character in the story who wants something which actually he doesn't uh, can afford he doesn't have that much she doesn't have that much finan- finances that she can buy a costly thing for herself so she is in a desire to own so many things that are a lavish Uh, that she can enjoy a lavish life or look like the classy women that the uh, women who belong to the higher class of society at that period of time so uh, we can just uh, think of three reasons why people just want to own expensive things what is the reason behind that if we want some expensive things and we cannot afford it but still we want to have it so what are the reason behind it so we can say that we want to obtain uh that for our own satisfaction satisfaction or we want to impress somebody or we want to exceed um someone or we ki hum kisi se aage nikalna chahte hain and we want others to uh others should identify us or uh, we should be acknowledged by them or they should be uh, asking about them who is this lady or who is that man he looks very nice he has a very expensive uh, dress or the jewelry or you want to be noticed so these are the main things that we want to own expensive things in life 
सो so, हमें बोला जाता है कि जितना हमारे पास है उतने ही में ही हमें गुजारा करना चाहिए और ज़्यादा इच्छाएं नहीं करनी चाहिए डिज़ायर नहीं करनी चाहिए जितनी चद्दर है उतने ही पाँव पसारो अगर उससे ज़्यादा आगे पसारो के पाँव तो वो चद्दर छोटी पड़ जाएगी सो दिस इज़ अंग सो वी शुड ऑलवेज गो विद द सेंग जितना हमारे पास है उतने में हमें खुश रहना चाहिए लेकिन यहाँ पे जो स्टोरी में द मेन करेक्टर द वीमेन इज़ नॉट सेटिस्फाइड विद व्हाट शी हैज़ एंड शी डिज़ायर फॉर मोर एंड मोर मूविंग टू द नेक्स्ट टॉक अबाउट द ऑथर गाय डी माउट प्रेजेंट सो ही इज़ द राइटर ऑफ दैट पीरियड ऑफ टाइम हु वॉज क्वाइट रियलाइस्टिक एंड पेसिमिस्ट ही वॉज क्वाइट पॉजिटिव एंड ही वॉन्ट्स टू राइट only about the real things and he has wrote, written so many short story which are uh, based on realistic and pessimistic approach and his stories always has has surprising uh, endings we will get to know in the story itself so uh, here in the story the necklace which we are going to uh, read is perhaps his most widely read story so necklace with the chapter which we are going to read the story which we are going to read is his most widely read story moving to the next he was interested in the psychology of his character so we'll get to know what kind of psychology is uh, being portrayed in this chapter as well so what is going on in their mind so these are all about the character he is talking about in the story the first character that i was talking about the woman who wants something which she cannot afford so she is a pretty young woman who is married to a clerk so she is a pretty young woman and is married to a clerk uh, so already she belongs to the family of a clerk and that's why she is married to a clerk and she thinks that she is so pretty she is so young she should be uh, should have married to some uh, handsome guy who had lot of wealth but unfortunately she had uh, uh, to birth in a clerk family and definitely she'll get married to a clerk family only so as the social structure reveals so she is dissatisfied with what she has whatever she has she is not satisfied with that and she is always desiring more and more she wants to have all the luxuries of life she is always lost in her dreams of wealth and pleasure and uh, whenever uh, uh, her husband looks at her she is always uh, dreaming of wealth pleasure luxury and lavish life so the other character that is her husband uh, he is the husband of matilda and is a very clerk the main character his name is matilda and he is an ordinary clerk and he cannot afford to buy so many things for his wife uh, because the finances does not support that much of luxury life and lavish uh, kind of lifestyle so he lives within his means uh, whatever he has is he he is satisfied but of course his wife is not satisfied with whatever they have he always tries to please his wife as he is the caring man and he knows that uh, his wife is actually uh, is not satisfied with the life she has but he tries to uh, to please her wife uh please his wife in any way he uh, because he is a caring man he is a mature man he is elder than uh, matilda he is five year elder than her so the third character that we'll get to know about is madam forrester she is a good friend of matilda she is helpful and considerate she lend matilda a necklace that leads to a ruin so we'll get to know that how uh, they plan to uh, borrow the necklace from madam forrester that is matilda's friend and she is quite rich and she goes to her to ask her for the necklace to wear in the party uh, but the necklace gets lost somewhere and then the real climax of the story begins because because of that necklace they have to ruin their life that means they have to destroy their life and we will see how so next uh, like you will see in the chapter uh, m is used for mansur or you can say that mr in french language so mme is for is the short form of french language is uh, madame or mrs so m would be married to mme so mr would be married to mrs definitely so next about the story when we talk about the story you'll get to know uh, what is all happening in the story so we were talking about the main character matilda she is uh quite young quite beautiful but she is an ordinary woman because she has been uh, born in a clerk family and she is definitely married to a clerk as well so unhappy with her 
monotonous simple life dreams of grandeur all the time so she's always dreaming of lavish life or uh, like the li- life of luxuries all the luxuries she dreams that she would be parting in some ha- five star restaurant having dinner in silver plates and enjoying the lavish food so she is always in her uh, dreams as she is not satisfied with her life so uh, madam lazel matel uh, mr lazel matel the husband is satisfied with what is that on the other hand his husband is satisfied with whatever he has he is also happy being a clerk he is uh, very happy that he is a clerk at least he is earning something for uh, the family lazel get invited to a ball at the minister of public instruction palace so one day uh her husband matilda her husband get an invitation of the party to a minister's public instructions palace and they were planning to go to the party but matilda was not happy having the invitation because she knew that she is not uh, going to fit in the party without any good dress to wear in so lazel thinks that his wife would be happy to know about the invitation to ball but matilda is displeased and refused to go as she doesn't have a dress to wear to the ball she is very much disappointed after getting that invitation because she doesn't have that that kind of dress that she will wear to the ball party that is the dance party so she refuses she says that i would not go there because i do not have uh, the dress to wear for the party moving to next her husband offers to buy her a dress for 400 francs here her husband is uh, supporting her and he's very caring about her and he says that whatever he has saved for himself that he wanted to go for hunting with his friend in summer and buy a gun for himself but he gives those 400 francs that he has saved to buy a dress then matilda buys a dress and still her husband finds that she's not happy he asks her for the reason for not uh, being happy for because the dress is also ready and she's going to the ball party she has the complain again that she is not having any jewel to complement the beautiful dress as the beautiful dress is ready but she complains that and she is worried that she doesn't have any jewel to wear uh, for the party which would complement her dress and she would uh, really look very nice and her husband suggests her that she should wear the flower jewelry and she rejects that uh, at suggestion because she says that i would be looking so cheap if i'll wear the flower jewelry to that higher class party so then her husband suggests to borrow jewels from her friend mme forest madam forester he says that you go to your friend and get a necklace from her or you can just borrow a necklace from her and she likes this idea and she goes to her friend next day and she finds a diamond necklace in her jewelry which attracts her attention she asks her to lend her the necklace to wear for the party and definitely when she wears that necklace with that beautiful dress she looks very charming very graceful and everybody at the party admires her matilda becomes a celebrity at the ball party as everyone admires her beauty everyone wants to talk to her everyone asks that oh, who is that lady and every man get attracted to her because she was looking so graceful so beautiful in that dress and the that necklace so unfortunately the couple discovers that the necklace is lost as they reach home when they return home at 4 o'clock in the morning as the party's uh, party was uh, ended at 4 in the morning they come home to a cab and they find that there is no necklace around her neck so she screams the husband asks the reason that why she is screaming she says that there is no necklace around my neck then mr laws and maids also the efforts contacts the police cabs officer advertises in newspaper but all the effort that he puts in went in vain there was no clue of the necklace where they have lost it so they decided to buy a new necklace to replace it so they found a substitution for the necklace because they after all they had borrowed it from somebody and they had to return it ko wapas karna hi hoga kyunki unhone wo kisi se borrow karke laya tha to jab wo 
मार्केट में जाते हैं एक दुकान में ज्वेलरी की शॉप में उस जैसा एक रिप्लेसमेंट देखते हैं तो उनको लगता है कि हम ये खरीद के उसको दे दें और जब वो शॉप पे जाते हैं और उसका प्राइस पूछते हैं तो दैट इज़ फॉर थर्टी सिक्स थाउजेंड फ्रैंक्स एंड दे ओनली हैड एटीन हंड्रेड फ्रैंक्स विद दिन बिकॉज दैट इज़ वॉट हिज फादर हैज़ सेव फॉर हिम सो ही हैज inherited those 18000 franc from his father and 18000 francs he had to borrow from uh, some land lords so that he can just buy for that necklace and return the necklace to madam forester so they do the same and for that they had to ruin everything uh, actually they had to spend 10 years of their life to recover their uh, loss which they have made to themselves after they lost that necklace the couple spent 10 years to pay back the debt the loan working day and night and suffering from dire poverty and they now turn to from middle class to the lower class now 10 years of poverty and misery rendered them old and weary after all when they are uh, living the life of poverty and they uh, are not enjoying the life that, that they were enjoying before and the lady has to work and they had to uh, to work double shift in the office so definitely if one has to work so hard you will look look so old older than your age and you definitely will look tired so aisa hi madam forester uh, lazil ke sath hota hai उन सॉरी मैडम लजल एंड मिसेस लजल के साथ होता है कि उन लोगों को बहुत हार्ड वर्क करना पड़ता है जो मेड्स एक उन्होंने रखी थी वो भी उनको हटानी पड़ती है सारा काम जो है मेटेल्डा को खुद करना पड़ रहा है और वो अपनी एज से भी ज़्यादा बूढ़ी दिखना शुरू हो गई हमेशा थकी हुई हारी हुई वो एक एक पैसा बचाने की कोशिश करती थी सो so, एक दिन जब दस साल के बाद जब उनका वो पैसा जो कर्ज वो उतर गया है वो लोन पे कर चुके हैं सुन लिया था सो so, जो मटेल्डा है वो एक दिन बाहर घूमने जाती है जस्ट टू हैव अ ब्रेक फ्रॉम द मानटनस लाइफ शी फाइंड्स मेमी फेस्टर एंड शी टेल्स हर द स्टोरी ऑफ द नेकलेस एंड हाउ शी हैज़ टू स्पेंड दैट टेन ईयर्स इन पॉवर्टी बिकॉज ऑफ दैट नेकलेस सो देन मैडम फॉरेस्टर इनफॉर्म आर दैट आर टेल्स आर दैट द नेकलेस दैट आई हैव लेंड यू वॉज जस्ट फाइव हंड्रेड फ्रेंक्स तो यहीं पर जो स्टोरी का सरप्राइज एंडिंग स्टार्ट होता है कि वो उसे बताती कि जो हार वो उससे मांग के लेके गई थी वो सिर्फ पाँच सौ फ्रेंक्स का था और उसके बदले उसने उसको रियल हीरे का हार रिटर्न किया जो कि तीन थर्टी सिक्स थाउजेंड फ्रेंक का था जबकि मैडम फॉरेस्टर ने भी ये चीज़ नोट नहीं की और जो मटेल्डा है और उसके हस्बैंड ने कभी भी ये नहीं समझा कि जो नेकलेस वो मांग के लाए हैं वो नकली हीरों का हो सकता है सो so, यही बोला जाता है कि जो आपके पास है उसी में सेटिस्फाई रहो उसी में अपना काम चलाओ और ज़्यादा ज़्यादा की इच्छा ना करो उसी ज़्यादा की इच्छा करने की वजह से जो मैडम लोजल है या मटेल्डा लोजल जो है उसको इतना सफ़र करना पड़ा और उसके हस्बैंड को भी उसके साथ सो वट एवर यू हैव यू मस्ट बी सेटिस्फाइड विद दैट आपको ज़्यादा की इच्छा नहीं करनी चाहिए उतना ही पाने की इच्छा करो जितना आप अफोर्ड करो दूसरों से जब आप मांगने जाओगे डेफिनेटली कोई ना कोई प्रॉब्लम हो जाएगी और फिर आपको उस प्रॉब्लम को सॉल्व करने के लिए और बड़ी प्रॉब्लम जो है शायद आपको कन्फ्रंट करनी पड़े सो so बेटर है आपके पास जो है उसी में खुश रहो ज़्यादा डिज़ायर्स जो हैं ज़्यादा एक्सपेक्टेशन हैं जो हमेशा रहो हमें जो है डिससेटिस्फेक्शन ही देंगी और हम कभी भी खुश नहीं रह पाएंगे सो वट एवर यू हैव बी हैप्पी इन दैट दिस इज़ द लेसन वी गेट इन द स्टोरी थैंक यू सो मच होप यू अंडरस्टैंड इट वेल